Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for this session. As a reminder, we will have a live Q&A after the presentation. We do recommend activating your microphone and camera for the Q&A portion of the session to make it more interactive. So with that, please join me in welcoming our next speaker, Kumar Madali, VP of Search, Data Science, and Big Data Platforms at Teledev. Kumar, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Kumar Madali. Thank you for uh, joining this session. I wish this could have been in-person session, but due to unprecedented reasons, we are meeting online. Hey, nevertheless, I'm glad we are able to convene. Thank you all for joining again. And uh, thanks to Dremio for giving this opportunity for us to share about Telenav's journey on smart data links. To make this session a bit interactive, we created a few polls. And as we go through this presentation, you will see those popping up in the poll window. I would appreciate if you all can take part of it. Briefly about me, I have 25 years of experience in enterprise search and location-based services, uh, primarily building search services and data platform powered by analytics in different verticals, such as e-discovery, knowledge management at companies like Inquirer, Stratify, and Intergraph. Besides work, I run. I'm an ardent half marathon runner with the best time under two hours. Usually I do one or two half marathons every year, but due to COVID situation, I couldn't do any run yet this year. Let's see how it goes as we progress. What do we do at Telina? We provide delightful connected car experiences through our product offerings such as navigation, in-car commerce, and infotainment, including productivity, and this horizon is expanding. And let's do a deep dive into the presentation. I will give some context about the domain we are dealing and take you guys through this journey. It all starts with the user. User gets into the vehicle, and a typical user would go through certain activity, which includes going to work, driving to going to restaurant for dining, sorting things out at bank or grocery and going on a road trip for travel or doing a leisure activity such as uh, going to park or theater, fitness, so on and so forth. And temporal activity typically would be either you do it right now or next few minutes to hours or you plan ahead for vacation or when you arrive at destination and then weekend holidays or weekdays. There is a variation in terms of what you do and how you do it. If you look into overall, it's about the user and we capture some information about user. And when it comes to the vehicle, we collect telemetry from the vehicle and it's all about the spatial and temporal data, what we did. And we'll talk about some numbers. We support about 90 plus countries across all regions, 40 plus languages and 40 million plus unique users we have. And this is growing. And I'm going to skip some numbers and 80 billion plus events per year, which translates to about 220 million events per day and about 80 terabytes plus new data per year. Our cumulative data, what we have, it is close to petabyte. And if you look into with the lens of V3, we have velocity and variety and volume wise, as we are collecting the telemetry from vehicles, uh, it is expected to grow even more exponentially. We have about like last one, two years, if you look into 3x year over year growth when it comes to velocity and uh, uh, volume wise, it is growing 2x. And this is, as I said, expected to grow exponentially. What are some of the challenges which made us to think about uh, something like smart data lake and our journey with that smart data lakes? Data is present as a silo having a fixed data Usually they are disconnected from the rest of the system, making it difficult to get the right information at right time for the right stakeholders. That's one of the key challenge. And uh, data is growing across all dimensions and we need to have an ability to manage it and while controlling the cost. Having the democratization for the data by enabling the discoverability through APIs and self-service tools and providing a multi-cloud support. We are mainly AWS shop, but we do have a support of Alice Cloud in China 
and in addition we do have uh, on prem kind of uh, data processing setup with a lot more regulatory and restrictions and then the data formats which are getting rapidly changed and that needs to be tackled having a data guard to measure quality and compliance having an ability to do on demand basis or scheduled manner you can run the data guard so that you can measure the quality at any time as needed importantly this is what like how do you make your data smart data is where like contextual and semantic relationships which needs to be created as you are progressing through the data life cycle this is an important piece what i mean by that when we talk about the context in previous slide we have seen the uh, uh, the temporal aspect of it so when you are going to work or returning home on the weekday versus what activity you do over the weekend versus when you are on a vacation could be different type of activity may be seen as example dining you may do the dining but how you do and where you do would vary significantly you may be doing it in the relaxed cuisine like during weekend or on the vacation you may be doing it quick grab and go or like fast food during the weekdays this is where the context context similarity and association of the context plays an important role and we will talk through as we progress on how we are making it smart data how smart data lake is helping with these aspects semantic relationship same thing if you are park if you are parking a vehicle in the uh, if you stop the car in the parking and you are heading you, you may go to either restaurant or you may go to bank or to grocery so when you do and then what kind of sequence you do and where you are doing it whether it is the home area as what we have seen in the previous slide or you may be doing it away from home area there are certain associations and relationships which needs to be created that is what like i talk about the semantic relations and what is the smart data lake what are the characteristics it needs to be it it should hold a single so it should be single source of truth and it should have an ability to acquire and store any data structure and structure or semi structure at any scale with the optimal cost and have a catalog to enable schema on read meaning you should have an ability to do the transformations at any time down the line so that you can solve the new use cases or create new business models in addition to having it schema on read this enables to have lot more flexibility than being it rigid democratization by having a self service visualization tools and apis flexibility to decorate tags and additional knowledge as we are progressing through the data life cycle with the contextual and semantic relations governance with the data quality compliance so on so forth and it's good like we are we define small uh, the smart data like characteristics but what it should enable the enabler should be you need to enable the creation of new business models and build data products and services with agility and then have cloud and edge analytics now let's talk about the components what are the components of the smart data lake data hub what is a data hub it's a data store containing the single source of truth plus multiple semantic stores to create the data products we briefly talked about the example of what the semantic means and then the context aspect of it as well and how do you create data hub through services services create data products and they consume data products what is a data product or you can refer it to as an artifact also it's nothing but a profile or a model that gets used it for predictions so the profile could be either spatial profile or a user profile or a vehicle profile or combination of both to give an example what we have seen in the previous slide typical user activity would be confined to a specific area you can frame that as a home area product and then you can have all interesting use cases to be solved either in commerce or beyond commerce that is one one uh, example of how you can frame this data as by creating a data product and leverage it in other areas and the vehicle data product would be safety road safety products which could be at a granularity of uh, uh, given 
small area like home area or it could be to state country and it can roll up to even region and now i'll talk about the uh, key some of the key flows or flavors of data how it flows through the system and lands into the data hub by no means it is a comprehensive variation of all the flows but this is just to illustrate a point on how it goes through various stages data comes in the form of service logs and this gets collected through fluent agents gets executed or passes through fluent aggregators to eventually land in elastic search and then the service metrics which are captured through the prometheus client libraries gets scraped and processed as part of prometheus server and goes into the time series database if you look into in the data hub regardless of where the data is getting stored your single source of truth is always s3 other forms of the data service events uh, which usually comply to event specification and these are typically the actions that would be taken based on certain triggers and the telemetry data coming from the vehicles as sensory information or behavioral data based on the interaction of the user with the applications that are residing in the vehicle goes through the event hub as events and then some events are configured to go through the stream processing and uh, that gets into the stream processing flow and then eventually after the decoration as you can see that some semantic enrichments happen as part of the stream processing and goes to the s3 for the single source of truth as well as it gets folded it into druid for real time operational analytics and certain parts would get into the red shape so that for downstream api services consumption via api is enabled in real time and other parts of the uh, data which flows through the event hub gets through the batch processing it comes to the raw storage and the, uh, and then it goes to the batch processing and eventually lands in s3 and some parts again comes to the redshift for downstream consumption and the road network data which is a spatial poi data point of interest data or other data feeds such as weather it gets through the transactional system and process through the custom connectors and then comes to the landing the landing storage or raw storage and eventually after going through certain decorations gets folded it into s3 which is a single source of truth and certain real time downtime the downward uh, downstream consumption it gets into that shift so if you look into the data hub primarily you do have a single source of truth which is s3 and there are additional semantic uh, stores are there and you can think of this whole data hub as complete storage with an abstraction and which enables to have the governance and if required some of these semantic stores can be rebuilt or reconstructed based on the single source of truth what you have it in the s3 with the decorations like such as tags that is present in s3 and it's good now we have data hub and let's see how the data products get created again the same data hub we have single source of truth and the semantic stores and it goes through the execute engine via data hub connectors and then the data products gets created services and then it comes to the data hub connectors and based on the type of the data product it may get federated across different semantic stores or in some cases it directly goes to s3 all combinations are possible and certain uh, uh, immediate like ad hoc analysis and exploration and part of uh, athena and dremio is also getting used and putting all pieces together you do have a data hub services and data product services create data products and services consume data products and services eventually are uh, uh, posted into data hub and all these are governed through by security data catalog with the quality guards data quality guards and compliance and the manifest of data products also are being folded into the data catalog so that any reconciliation can be done at later point and all these are to enable different forms of analytics for the users could be internal users or it could be external or partners now let's talk through about uh, analytics uh, and then we'll walk through one specific use case as we are progressing a quick glance of analytics it needs to answer certain questions mainly the descriptive what has happened in the past 
until few seconds back. And then diagnostic, which is why something has happened. If you take an example of the same home area, what I listed or what I gave, or what I talked about earlier. So there are certain trips that would happen. There is some affinity for a given user to do certain activity when you do in a when you are doing it in home area versus when you do it outside. So what happened is about the factual information and having an ability to do any kind of slicing and dicing or exploration is what it enables. Why it happened is what diagnostic would enable to help. And this would feed into the predictive, which would help to answer questions like what may happen in the future. And this, the collective information would get feed into prescriptive, which enables to list out set of actions for getting the optimal outcome. And descriptive and diagnostic, again, uh, the under the hood, it is all the data hub is where that the semantic and then the single source of truth is present. Goes through the execution engine and uh, different flavors of visualization is enabled. For observability, usually it goes to Grafana, and for all functional and product analytics, it goes to Kibana, Tableau, and Superset based on different stakeholders and internal different business organization, different uh, uh, visualization tools are enabled to have. It. And in addition, the services also consumed via APIs for any of these insights and data. And let's talk about the predictive analytics. Again, the data hub here, TRIPS is a, is a data product which was created uh, from the example what we talked about in the earlier slides, but that is going to be there in S3 itself as a single source of truth, and all the uh, bookkeeping and metadata is managed it in the catalog, but for illustration purposes, it is being listed it as a separate block in the data hub. And it goes through the execution block, and this is where that ML model lifecycle kicks in. And model starts with an experimentation, and then usually experimentation happens through the Jupyter notebooks, and it comes to the development phase. As part of the development phase, APIs get created first, and then the model building, model parameters tuning, and then uh, evaluation happens as part of this phase. And then the model gets created, and uh, this example, the destination model from the trips, uh, what we have captured it based on the user's activity, the one of the model or artifact of that would be the destination model. And then that gets stored it in S3 and some meta information is stored in the Dynamo. Regardless of where it is stored, the bookkeeping information and meta information is always stored it in the catalog. And then comes to the testing phase. Testing would happen either through the serverless or the containers based on the characteristics that are required for a specific model and then goes to the production. And then applications would start consuming it and certain, certain models or certain products like would be uh, sent to the event hub uh, as a message and whoever is listening to those topics would consume the updated models and goes to the monitoring. And this interactive visualization would happen and also in certain cases, the simulation happens for the models to see how the behavior would be if we pick certain changes. And uh, data product is the trips which has been created based on the user's activity in a given area or the overall user activity across all the areas. And that gets into the, that gets uh, used it to create the destination model. And then how it gets used it to give a concrete use case as user gets into the car, when you start the ignition, you will see the prediction showing up where that user may likely heading at that point in time. And prescriptive analytics, here the predictive data products also gets used it in addition to other semantic stores. And it almost goes to exactly the same cycle. I will skip through in good interest of time. It exactly goes through the same flow but the model that gets created is the productivity model. So what it means is that as in the previous example, when, you, when the user is heading into, uh, gets into the vehicle and start ignition and going to a restaurant as there is a reservation that has been made. And uh, there is a traffic incident on the way which makes user not to reach on time for the reservation. At that time, 
there are two possible outcomes that can happen. Either you may have to postpone the reservation to later point in time if there is an availability or you need to cancel. So this happens based on the uh, based on the notifications under the hood, like what we have built it, that would be communicated. Either you will change the reservation or it get canceled. These are the actions that can be taken for the uh, for the user by the system. This is what the prescription for the productivity, as as to give an example, how it looks. And now let's talk about a little bit about what is next. So we need to transform into ML ops. Right now, there's a quite a bit of uh, uh, operationalization that needs to happen to make uh, models more robust, working in conjunction with the uh, uh, profiles uh, from the prescript for the prescriptive analytics. And then we are we, we need to have uh, more incremental processing, and we are watching Apache Hoodie and Iceberg this space actively. And we'd like to get to this and adapt to this sooner than later. And creating new data products and enabling new business models in real time is another critical area. It is like a journey and not a destination. And we need to continue to iterate and improvise our process and then the technologies around that. And what are the key takeaways? Give emphasis to visualization and APIs with the contextual and semantic relationships. If you look into Maslow's law of hierarchy, the mandatory needs are like you do have a data and having a single source of truth is like mandatory. And then you have the discoverability and governance for your data. Then it comes to the fulfillment needs, which are like creating the semantic richness and then having the data products. Data products is, uh, is, is uh, like sits on the top with the, with the fulfillment as a fulfillment need. And that is what like we need to design and get to. And don't underestimate the monitoring and data quality guards to prevent the data swamp. Otherwise, it's a garbage in garbage out. If you don't know like what you are dealing with and you don't have enough checks and balances with the data guard, it, it becomes increasingly complex and uh, challenging. Everything costs. What matters important in terms of the characteristics is very critical. As an example, if you really, uh, if your business doesn't demand to have a multi-cloud support, uh, at least in a visible feature, then how much you want to have an abstraction layer and uh, uh, what extent you want to directly use the technology, you need to strike a good balance because there, like it's a dollar cost and then the opportunity cost gets involved. And clear, Explore opportunities to create new data products. And you need to take an advantage of spawn data. Like to draw an analogy, you have a typically in a software development, you have the source code and which enables you to create some binary artifacts. If you have an issue with any binary, generally the debugging or troubleshooting, you try to trace and then look into the source code. Of course, through the log files, and there are additional mechanics are there to do a first level troubleshooting. But the point I'm saying it is. In the end, like you will get to the source code to see what's happening and then try to address. Likewise, when you are creating the models to enable your uh, uh, advanced technical capabilities through predictions and prescription, you need to have a good way to explain why something has happened and when it, when it happens. So for that, tracing it to get to the profile and then having it a good uh, reconciliation would be highly helpful. But at the same time, depending on whether you are doing it for the cohort of users or small set of users, you just can have it enough sampling when you are creating the profiles while you want to have and accomplish the explainability. With that, I would open floor for any questions. All right, thanks Kumar. Um, so as Kumar mentioned, now is your chance to ask some questions live. If you have a question, please use your the button on the upper right to share your audio and video, and then you'll automatically be put in a queue. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, if for some reason you don't pop up on the screen and you still would like to ask your question, um, unfortunately, I've lost a couple of speakers already, uh, please do ask them in the, uh, the session chat and we'll go ahead and ask them of um, Kumar verbally. 
Let's try one more. Any luck there? Nope. And as probably you may have seen it in the poll window, some of the questions, those are the questions you need to ask yourself very critically to see how your data lake can leverage to bring the value and then monetization to the organization. Yep. All right. There we go. We've got a question asker. Do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Um, hi, uh, Kumar. This is uh, Gopi Gopikrishna. Um, it was a nice presentation and I liked it. Um, so why, I, I have two questions. Uh, one, um, uh, you, you said that um, uh, the data, uh, the smart data uh, it can be captured um, when a user uh, is uh, at restaurant or in places. So how that uh, data is captured? Um, I mean, say, uh, this uh, product or whatever service that you have is in, inside the car, right? So uh, I just want to understand like how uh, the user's uh, behavior is captured when he is outside uh, of uh, the car. Uh, that question. And the second question I have, uh, um, how, how the security of are being uh, uh, taken care uh, in the process of uh, capturing the user's um, um, uh, user's behavior. I mean, uh, sometimes uh, it, sometimes people may not want to share their um, uh, location uh, uh, area specific information. Um, I mean, it's it's their choice, right? So, just wanted to understand how how the security aspects aspects are being uh, considered uh, in this scenario. Okay. Good question, Skopi. Thank you for asking. Uh, I will quickly answer the first question. Second one is that little loaded. Probably, like we can take through that as uh, as part of uh, as we get into the Slack channel. I can. I'll be happy to answer that question more detail. Okay, sure. But I try to answer uh, very quickly. Uh, I'll try to answer for both questions. So you're absolutely right. So when you are in the vehicle, there are th there is only certain information that you can capture. But the way you collect that the information or the data from the vehicle is based on the ignition start and then the GPS probe that enables you to construct and see where you are heading and where you are for parking. However, once you park at a location, you may be going to restaurant or the bank or some other area or, or some other era, to run some other errand. That aspect of it, you will not be knowing it unless you have an active navigation or some kind of a scheduler like through which that integration is happening, right? So if it is an active navigation, if you have provided the, the specific destination, then you do have that information and that gets used it. If it is not there through the movement data and by other means based on that like a pedestrian as you are heading it into a specific location, that information would get captured. And then this is where that some semantic richness comes into picture based on where you are heading, based on that particular latitude and longitude, you can compute it to see what is that particular point of interest or an entity where you are heading. Okay. 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 All right. Thank, thank you for the great question. And for the security, like we will take it offline. Thank you. Yeah, good call. All right, so I think uh, given the time, I think that's all the questions we have a uh, chance to answer today. Um, thank you, Kumar, for this great session. And for everyone attending, Kumar will be available in the dedicated Slack channel for more discussion and Q&A. So just look for his name in the Slack channel.